Hello everyone, this is Professor May Joan Aguila, and in this video lecture, we are going to have an introduction to coordination components. So we are going to take a look into some of the common terminologies that you might encounter when we talk about coordination compounds. So what are coordination compounds? A compound that is consists of what is known as a complex ion, and if it is in ion form, it usually has a counter ion. So the complex ion is consisted of a central metal cation, which is usually a transition metal, with one or more molecules or ion around it, so bonded with the metal central cation. And these groups are usually referred to as ligands. So an example of which is shown, so we have cobalt as the central metal ion, and then we have ammonia and the chloride ion as the ligands. So the complex ion can be overall cationic. So if this structure results to a positive charge, so that's a cationic complex. It can also be anionic, so the overall charge is negative, or neutral complex, so the overall charge is zero. So for cases wherein the complex is charged, you would expect usually that it has a counter ion, either an anionic counter ion or a cationic counter ion. Now, the central metal cation in a coordination compound or in a complex has two valences. The first one, which is referred to as the primary valence, is simply the oxidation number of the transition metal. So this is the charge of the metal. If you remove all the ligands from it, so in this case, ammonia is a neutral molecule, whereas chloride has a negative one charge. This coordination compound or this complex is neutral. That means cobalt here has a positive two charge. So its oxidation number is two. So we usually write that as cobalt second valence is referred to as the secondary valence, which is the coordination number. The coordination number is the number of groups, so either a molecule or ion, so essentially the number of ligands that are bonded to the central metal cation. So in this case, we have six, which are all bonded to the central cobalt metal ion. So the coordination number or the secondary valence for cobalt in the given complex is six. So there are several examples of coordination compounds in nature, one of which is hemoglobin or myoglobin, which is the substance that is responsible for carrying oxygen into our body. Hemoglobin is in the blood, myoglobin is in the muscles. So there are similarities in the structure of hemoglobin and myoglobin, in particular, the complex that is involved in the structure. So for both, the ligand that is associated with hemoglobin or myoglobin is this porphine structure. So it has uh, four nitrogen, and two of the nitrogen actually has protons attached to it. So if those protons are removed, this will result to a negative two charge for the ligand. So in this case, so when you have iron, which is the metal that is associated for carrying oxygen in blood or in the muscle, through this uh, hemoglobin or myoglobin structure. So we have here two plus for 
Fe2 plus and the nitrogens were in, it is connected. Those are negative one each. So this whole structure is neutral, has a zero charge. So this is how it looks like when it is in a protein. So this is uh, illustrating a portion of the hemoglobin or myoglobin wherein you have the iod porphyrin structure. So the rest of the porphyrin structure is not simply shown for simplicity. Or sometimes in references, you will find that there's like a ring or an arc that connects the nitrogen, so signifying the porphyrin structure. And you have water attached to iron in here. In this uh, several structures shown, you have the possible coordination of iron either something like this, which is uh, parallel to the plane of the ligand, or this one, which is perpendicular to the plane of the ligand, and the last one, which is as a certain angle, not exactly parallel nor perpendicular. It is bent when you compare it with the plane of the ligand. Another example is a cisplatin, which is the popularly used as anti-cancer drug. So please, cisplatin, so this is platinum. Both the red spheres represent chloride, and this represents ammonia. And the way that it works is represented by this diagram. So this represents the protein. So you have in here, the two chlorides are unbonded to the platinum or dissociated from the platinum, ending to the protein is made possible because the two chlorides are bonded in positions that are side by side to one another, not opposite to one another. So this uh, structure, which is the cis arrangement, is uh, very important in the coordination of the cis platin to the protein. So one of the terminologies that we should be familiar with is denticity, which is the number of donor atoms in the ligand. So in the ligand, such as in the four fin structures that we have, although it is complex, the donor atoms there would be the nitrogen atoms. So these are the ones that are directly bonded to the central metal ion. We can differentiate ligands depending on the number of donor atoms present in it as one donor, which is we refer to as monodentate. Examples represent water or ammonia or chloride. So water would be the oxygen, ammonia would be the nitrogen. We can also have a two donor atom in a ligand and we call this bidentate. An example is ethylene diamine and uh, three or more donor atoms, we just simply refer to this as polydentate, or you can go about, indeed, uh, depending on the number of donor atoms. So for example, for three, it's gonna be tridentate, for six, gonna be hexadentate. But collectively, you can call this polydentate. An example of which is uh, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. So these are some of the common ligands and arranged depending on the number of donor atoms that can attach to the metal. So we have monodentate. So we have here some examples. Bidentate, so this is the ethylene diamine. So the one in parenthesis is the shorthand notation or the abbreviation for the said ligand. And for polydentate, and we have in here penta, or ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. So in its uh, common form, it is in the minus four charge. So the charge is brought upon by this uh, oxygens, which also can bind to the metal. 
and another two possible bonding sites would be the two nitrogen. So that's why it is hexadentate. So when we talk about polydentate ligands, so bidentate, tridentate, hexadentate, actually this process were in those different donor atoms can simultaneously coordinate or be bonded to the central metal is referred to as chelation. So for coordination compound, the formation of a complex, this is treated as a Lewis acid base reaction where in the central atom, central metal atom is the Lewis acid and the ligand, so the donor atom in the ligand is actually the Lewis base. So that's why the donor atom will donate an electron pair to the Lewis acid, the central atom. And when, say, a polydentate ligand simultaneously form bond to the central atom, we're forming a cyclic structure, and this is referred to as chelate. So in here, I'm showing you the different uh, chelate structures that are formed depending on the density of the ligand. So we have ethylenediamine. It is a bidentate, so it makes this uh, five-membered ring structure. Diethylene triamine. So the coordination is through nitrogen. It make up a two five-membered ring structures, and so we have triethylene tetraamine or trien, which is a tetradentate ligand. So in the structure, we're looking at three five-membered rings that are fused or connected to one another. And this is how the EDTA, which is hexadentate ligand, when coordinated to the metal, looks like. So it is uh, quite important when you draw the structures, you can uh, go away with writing the uh, oxidation state for the metal and the charges of the ligand, and just simply consider that collectively for the charge of the complex ion. Another important thing that you should remember is determining the oxidation number of the central metal. So basically here, this is the charge of the metal if you remove all the ligands, be it a neutral ligand or an anionic ligand or sometimes maybe a cationic. So let's practice on determining the oxidation number of the metals in these uh, coordination compounds. So the first example is potassium. And then the complex actually is the one with gold in it. So how will you know that? The one which is usually written in square bracket is the complex. So potassium there represents the counter ion. So we have each hydroxide is minus one. There are four of those in the formula. And then potassium, the counter ion, is actually plus one. And if you sum up all the charges to make it up to zero, that would mean that the oxidation number or charge of gold plus potassium plus that of the hydroxide, but there are four of those in the formula. So this will give you gold as having plus three oxidation number. Or you can also approach this by just looking into the complex. So we know that potassium is plus one. So that means the complex bears negative one as the charge. So somewhat similar to what we've done before. So just add the oxidation states or oxidation number, so for each hydroxide you have one, but there are four, so this is negative four. So what should be the oxidation number for gold? So as when you add them up, it should give you negative one. This clearly means that gold should be plus three to give you negative one. Now for the second example, in this case, the counter ion is the nitrate, which is negative 1 in charge. So each of the nitrate is negative 1. There are three of those. 
ammonia is a neutral molecule, so its charge is zero. Although there are six of those, its charge is zero. So to sum it all up, the coordination compound is zero. So you have the oxidation number for chromium plus that of for ammonia. There are six of those plus that of for the counter ion nitrate, which is negative one, and there are three of those. When you total that up, it should be zero. So this means that chromium has plus three as oxidation 